And welcome to Nike EYBL Scholastic at the Bob McKillop Invitational on League Ready. We are live from Hofstra University on Long Island in New York for some big time high school hoops. Pat O'Keefe and Austin Johnson with you today. Our matchup tonight featuring a pair of Nike EYBL Scholastic teams. The legacy early college Lions taking on the Brewster Academy Bobcats. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups brought to you by Nike for Legacy. Shackleton and Hanson, they will share the point guard duty. Travell Bryson in range when he crosses half court. TJ Copeland and Destin Christian, the front line for Legacy, which comes in with a record of 12 and six. Their opponents, top 10 in the country. The Brewster Academy Bobcats and a lot of Division I talent in this starting lineup. Elijah Crawford, the head of the snake. Noyes Indrasadis, Dwayne Aristode, Sebastian Wilkins, and Daniel Jacobson, the seven-footer in the middle on his way to Purdue to continue their big man legacy in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's the first game of a triple header today here, Austin. The third game, the main event today, will feature the top two teams in the country. But let's take a look at this game here between Brewster and Legacy. Excited because a huge event, a huge showcase, and a lot of high-level talent on the floor. Yeah, what a phenomenal tournament put together and well run with an embarrassment of riches. When it Talk about the different types of talent. We had a chance to speak with Coach B.J. Jackson from Legacy earlier this week. And he emphasized on one thing, and that is finishing. This is a group that is going to approach this game with a point guard by committee type style in play. And on the opposite side, the Brewster Academy Bobcats have one of the best back backcourts in the entire country with Elijah Crawford leading the way. And you gotta like that balance that they had. You, meant that you mentioned the inside out approach, the rich get richer in Purdue. When you look at the big fella that's going to be able to go into West Lafayette next year and be able to stretch the floor as well as he can hit the triple. The focus for Legacy is finishing. The focus for Brewster Academy is starting because that's been the theme of this season. They've gotten off to a lot of slow starts. In fact, 10 straight games at one point this year, they were trailing after the first quarter. Yeah, against La Lumiere, they were down 22 points at one point and had to fight and claw their way back. Coach Jason Smith says he just wants to see his team play their best basketball from the jump. David S. Mack Sports Complex, the Mack on the campus of Hofstra University and Daniel Jacobson, the seven-footer from Albuquerque, New Mexico. The tap conceded to him by T.J. Copeland who retreats to the defensive end and here we go. Game one of a triple header. Brewster Academy in white, Legacy in purple. As underway, Brewster, a little backdoor cut, reverse, comes up short, second attempt though, and that's a travel against Sebastian Wilkins, missing an easy opportunity. A good old fashioned sprite, as we used to call it, when you don't get enough elevation to get that basketball up and above the rim. I bet Wilkins wish he could have that one back. Cole Hansen, the senior guard out of Wisconsin, running the point guard here. Entry pass in the post. Copeland, a physical player, but he's blocked from behind by Jacobson, and that's been a big improvement in his game, the rim protection. How about this matchup of styles? Copeland, a lot more stout. Jacobson, leaner and taller, but a great rim protector. B.J. Jackson, who's in his 13th season as the head coach for Legacy, says Copeland, one of the most physical players he's ever coached. A beast down in the paint, but he has to make up for it with the lack of height compared to some of the people he'll be going up against at the next level. Another turnover committed by Brewster. Three-pointer is good by Destin Christian. And we're on the board here in the first. Destin Christian has been playing very, very well this season, averaging around 14 points, and he's showing the versatility. Nice hit ahead pass for the triple. They work through Jacobson at the top. Here's Elijah Crawford, picks up his dribble. Crawford, the Stanford-bound point guard. Aristode baseline reverse layup and 
the first of many athletic moves we'll see today. The flying Dutchman getting off with a head full of steam. And how about that play right there? Legacy coming right back. Bryson with a nice little touch of his own high off the glass. I like that. The flying Dutchman, a <laughs> nod to Hofstra about 30 years ago, their former nickname. So a quick start for Legacy, a three-point lead. Crawford, spin move, lays it off for the big fella. Jacobson off one dribble and off the glass. That's a nice finish right there after the dime and dish by Crawford. You like Jacobson squaring those shoulders and getting into the chest of the defender and finishing through contact. Action starting to pick up here. Copeland pops outside, and the rebound is corralled by Wilkins. Looking to push. Indrasaitis to the basket, cut off, loses the possession. His second turnover. The other way, Hansen, one dribble into a three, and that is off the mark. Frenetic pace here, a one-point lead for Legacy. Swing pass, Wilkins open for three. That is a nice, fine three-star player. Sebastian Wilkins, he has been trending in the right direction. And a lot of schools are after his services, including my alma mater, Rutgers University. Hansen couldn't answer with the three. And some contact here as Crawford was about to lose it. But we have our first foul. It's going to be against Destin Christian. Elijah Crawford, six foot two, buck 88. Consummate lead guard. And you can imagine that he's a little bit more juiced up for this one considering he was just at Legacy Academy last season. He's playing against his old school. We have a little bit of that on both sides today. Gabe Grant on the bench for Legacy. Played for Brewster Academy last year. Two point lead for Brewster here in the first quarter. Legacy bench wanted to carry there. Nothing doing and an athletic finish inside by Aristo. That is a tough play. Six foot seven, 205. Aristo getting downhill and utilizing the body control not to pick up the charge right there. Indrasaitis chakes his down the long rebound. Here's Crawford. Hansen guarding him. Brewster Academy, 21 and 6 record this season. Sharing the ball. Aristo turns the corner and down the lane. That's nice big to big action right there. Clearing out space, Daniel Jacobson leading to a wide open lane for Dwayne Aristode, and he's hanging on rims. How about the start for Dwayne Aristode? Six quick points for the junior out of Amsterdam in the Netherlands, hence the Flying Dutchman reference by you, Austin. Uh, ESPN 60 ranked 19th in the country in his junior class. And you see the athleticism, but what I like most about him are some of the things that you can't teach, and that's his motor. He goes hard each and every time down the court, caught up with coach ahead of this one, and he says his versatility on the defensive side of the basketball and the ability to allow him to guard all four positions and maybe even switch off on a five on time to time will make him very, very viable and highly sought after. So a 9 nothing run for Brewster Academy. They've opened up the largest lead of the game so far. Hansen into the front court. They're going to feed the post and a little bump from behind. That's the big fella Daniel Jacobson with the foul, bodying up DJ Copeland. Copeland giving up three to four inches in height, but at the same time outweighs Jacobson by about 30 pounds as Shackleton knocks it down from the top. It's a nice move, mid range. Understanding, picking your spots and taking what the defense gives you. Shackleton has developed the knack of being a gym rat and it's paying dividend right there. Indrasaitis, quiet start for him. Not a quiet start for Aristote. Here's Wilkins, another three from the right side. Copeland clears the boards. Directing traffic, Adrian Shackleton, senior out of Palm Beach, Florida. A little miscommunication there. It's going to be a foul against Brewster and against the over-aggressive Noyes Indrasaitis. Brewster 
Second foul against the Bobcats here in the first quarter. An 11 to eight lead. Hansen swings it back on the right side for Christian and his pass out of the reach and out of bounds. Copeland couldn't handle it. Important young players to get the right angle for post entry feeds right there. That time Christian didn't have it. it might have served him well to take another dribble down to the baseline to try to get that entered into the post. First game of three today at Hofstra, the Bob McKillop Invitational. Jacobson down the lane, met at the rim, and a foul is called. My goodness, did Travell Bryson get up there? Listen, that ain't right. Six <laughs> foot four, making Daniel Jacobson the seven footer look like he was the guard in that situation. He met him at the summit. I know there was a foul, but boy, was that impressive. Big time play. As Jacobson hits the first free throw. Let's see this again. Meet me at the top. <laughs> Listen, as a referee, you might just have to let that one slide. <laughs> I don't disagree. Jacobson takes advantage, hitting both free throws. Back up to a five-point lead. Now from the corner, Bryson can't connect on the three. Jacobson the rebound all alone. Crawford with his head up. Looking for a cutting Aristote, it was deflected by Bryson. Play on, good ball movement here. Hansen from the left. Now for the high post, Copeland's jumper is good. Confident, TJ Copeland facing up, surveying the floor and taking again what the defense gives. No need to dribble into the teeth of defense and a seven foot rim protector if he's gonna allow you to settle for that nice soft shot. The 21st ranked center in the class of 2024. Copeland out of Oradell, New Jersey. And that's gonna be a blocking foul. So two close ones in a row go against Legacy. That one called against Adrian Shackleton. Copeland's been all business. The local flavor from New Jersey getting back up into his home area, he shed a lot of weight since he arrived at Legacy, down to 235, looks all cut up, ready to compete. High Division I level, whoever gets him will be lucky. B.J. Jackson goes to his bench, Kylan King in the game. So is Preston Fowler for Brewster. Jacobson finds Fowler in the paint, kicks it out. Indrasaitis for three, and the tip is no good. And the rebound is cleared by Copeland. In this game, you got to find bodies hit and drive. If you are caught under the rim, you might be put it back on a poster with some of the athletes that are out here competing. Good kick out pass here. Shackleton picks up the dribble. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Copeland drives right at Jacobson and is blocked, but also a foul as TJ Copeland hits the deck. Well, head down right at the defender there. The approach of TJ Copeland. BJ Jackson mentioned his physicality being not only a gift, but a curse in certain instances because he gets what he classified as a different whistle because of just how hard he plays each and every possession. And you see it right there working out in his favor. Jacobson to the bench. And Brewster and their head coach, Jason Smith, able to bring in a near seven-footer in Cole Kirouac, a senior from Cumming, Georgia, who is committed to Georgia Tech. It's nice to have options. If you're backup center, <laughs> going to the ACC. <laughs> it's not a bad rotational piece to have at your disposal. And another skilled and highly touted big fella those aren't easy to come back. And come here's your, your backup point guard on the floor. A Division I point guard, Jeremiah Jenkins, heading to Brown. Indrasaitis is three, comes up short. Long rebound picked up by Shackleton. Looking for something to develop. Indrasaitis staying with him. Yeah, slow start for Indrasaitis. King, far. quick step down the lane and a nice floater. That is a tough, tough move right there. Utilizing... A quick spin to create a little bit of space. And how about the slough, sl uh, soft flotation device in the paint? Really nice touch around the basket. Indrasaitis hasn't found the range yet. Here's Aristode. 
Legacy picking up its defensive intensity. Shot clock down to seven. Aristo trying to create. Loses, gets it back into the basket. Boy, he can get to the basket with ease. That is so tough right there. And you can see how skilled European players are. And they come with that package. You're able to operate in tight quarters. Nice behind the back move to change direction. And how about that finish? Highly competitive first quarter. Shot clock is off. That right there. That should be a foul to give, and it is for Brewster Academy with 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Charlie Pugh checks in for the final 10.9. Legacy, after a slow start, has stabilized things. Christian pulls up, mid-range follow, no. One more attempt before the buzzer, and they can't get it off. A one-point lead for Brewster Academy after eight minutes. So nice spin move right there by Kylan King. San Diego, California, Prada getting in early on the action with a nice little floater. So one quarter in the books here in the first of our triple header at the Bob McKillop Invitational. Brewster leading legacy, 15 to 14. And you are uh, Nike EYBL Scholastic from the Bob McKillop Invitational is brought to you by Nike. Only basketball. Chipotle, real ingredients, real flavors. Chipotle for real. The Army National Guard, the next greatest generation is now. And Gold SN, maximize your potential. So it's funny, these four o'clock starts, Austin, you never know what you're going to get. Obviously, both teams traveling to get to suburban New York City today. Maybe the first one or two minutes a little slow, but then the action certainly picked up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like starting up an old car in the winter. You got to get a feel for it. And the first couple of minutes allow for you to do so, and it's nice to be able to have a big guy like Sebastian Wilkins. Number 11, big fella has been crushing it. <laughs> he certainly has. This is today's player spotlight brought to you by Chipotle. So let's take a look. Wilkins, a burrito bowl guy with white rice, black beans, and queso. I'm with you so far, big fella. Lettuce, <laughs> cheese, and tomato salsa. You know, I had to switch to the burrito bowl also. The uh, advice of my wife because I had to cut down on the calories. A little more carb conscientious? <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I burn as many calories throughout the day as young Sebastian Wilkins, but... He's always keeping it real. Well, I like how he mixes it up on the basketball court in addition to with his Chipotle order. Nice balance approach. Second quarter, Legacy down a point. Little step back jumper by Kylan King is off the mark. A battle inside for the rebound. Pulled down by Fowler. Here's Jenkins off the pump fake. Jump shot from the right side comes up short by Charlie Pugh. A lot of short jumpers so far. Jenkins jumps the route. Another possession lob back door and the finish by Kirouac. That is a beautiful dime right there by Jenkins. And you got to watch out him. He's a swiper. He's number nine in the entire EYBL in steals overall. 1.7 a game. Future Ivy League point guard headed to Brown. Brewster back up by three. King. Hasn't been bashful here in the first half. His shot is batted out of bounds. It'll stay with Legacy. Another look at that alley-oop. Talk about staying with it. He read the eyes on that pass the entire way like a safety coming across trying for an interception. And then after the steal, was able to turn defense into an offense with a nice soft lob. That's the impressive part. He made the steal, but then looking for more, he found Kirouac. That's why you had to keep your head up. Copeland back in the post. Spin move. Wow. Right to the basket as Kirouac hits the deck. And then rocks the baby, letting Brewster Big Fellas that know that he's you're just not physical enough for him thus far in this game. You gotta match that intensity every time you're establishing post position. TJ Copeland certainly bringing that intensity so far. Here's a deep three from the left side of the arc, connected by Preston Fowler. It's a nice looking shot from the six foot seven, 200 pound junior, four star prospect. You can see the versatility right there in the silky smooth stroke. King right to the basket. That's a wild shot. And it goes out of bounds off of Legacy. Trailing by four. 
Dwayne Aristode back in. And so is Adrian Shackleton. Second quarter. Four-point lead for Brewster. You see, ranked eighth in the country. Later tonight, we will have number one against number two, Montverde against Long Island Lutheran, the hometown team. Shot clock under 10. Indrositis blocked inside by Copeland, out of bounds, off of Brewster. Some nice reaction time right there by TJ Copeland. Able to get to that basketball, remain vertical, and defend without fouling. Impressive play. Averaging two blocks a contest. You can see that athleticism working in his favor. Cole Hansen working hard here, takes it all the way to the basket and a tough right-handed finish. <laughs> well, if they're not going to stop you and step up, continue to drive the basketball. It's a way to put pressure on the defense. One of a couple players on this legacy team, that's the son of a coach. Cole's dad is a prep scout. Here's Fowler after he connected on that three a few moments ago. Down the lane, Jenkins looking to kick to Indrasadis. He'll take it inside, and it's a carry against Noyes Indrasadis. He's heading to Iowa State, a terrific four-star recruit, but a tough start so far for Noyes Indrasadis as he heads to the bench. Yeah, it's forcing a little bit, trying to get into his flow and into his rhythm, and he's so valuable to this team, the leading minutes guy for Brewster all in all. It just has to be a little bit more efficient in where he's picking and choosing his spots. Here's Hansen on the left. Copeland's been a four so far. Destin Christian just checked back into the game. Seven seconds to shoot. Shackleton. Looking to create his bounce pass is picked off. Wilkins ahead for Crawford behind the back. Somehow it gets to Fowler. Jenkins open for three off the front of the rim. Offensive rebound by Crawford inside. Good hands defensively for Christian. As Jeremiah Jenkins has to retreat into the backcourt and he'll settle things down. Nice play by Christian being in the right spot and anticipating and allowing his defense to settle in and try to guard in the half court. Cross court pass, open three from the left side is good for Aristode. And Aristode has been leading the charge for this team offensively. He is scoring at all three levels. Got 11 points, leading scorer in the game so far. Halfway through the second quarter, Brewster has led most of the way. Up by five right now. Copeland spin move and blocked from behind by Fowler. Nice reaction time by Fowler. Ooh. Running the floor, lays it off for Wilkins who can't finish. Second attempt, that's no good either as Copeland did a good job hustling back. Hansen pokes it away and an open three from the top. Wilkins too strong, tip is no good. Brewster all over the offensive glass there, nothing to show for it. Gotta have vice grips for hands in this game because everybody's swiping at that rock. Good hands by Fowler but ends up with Travell Bryson, a sweet floater in the paint. And how about that Bryson doing what he does best, top 25 in scoring in the EYB, e EYBL at number 18 for Legacy. Back within three is Legacy. Aristode has the defender. Now he kicks it out to Wilkins. Crawford with his head up. Aristode will try another one. That's tipped out of bounds, saved, but a good hustle job there by Jenkins. Aristote lays it off for Crawford. Crawford and Jenkins sharing the backcourt right now. Jeremiah Jenkins takes a peek at the clock, backs out to restart the offense. A deep three, Preston Fowler is short, and that's a push off against Dwayne Aristote. Long shots lead to long rebounds, and if you are on the weak side trying to anticipate where that basketball is coming off the rim, you gotta do your work early. You can't push and use your hands. You gotta use your feet and try to beat that opposite player to the rock. Noya Sindrasadis back in the game replacing Jenkins. And for legacy, Gabe Grant, a 6'10 senior from Baltimore, 
makes his first appearance. And you mentioned Elijah Crawford last year played for Legacy. Grant spent last season at Brewster Academy playing against some of his former teammates. Basketball is a very small universe. Strong drive inside by Sebastian Wilkins, and he draws the foul. What I appreciated about some of the storytelling and the feedback that we got from these coaches is, although they're competing against each respective program over the course of this weekend, they share the genuine and shared interest in making sure that these kids are getting the best opportunity to go to the next level. Saw B.J. Jackson a moment ago. He's in his 13th season as the head coach at Legacy, and he told us that when Gabe Grant transferred to Legacy, Jason Smith, the coach of Brewster, called him and shared some tips on how to coach him. And that's exactly what I was trying to allude to is no matter where a kid is playing, that you just want to make sure that they have the ultimate success to go to the next level and achieve their dreams. Back to a five-point lead for Brewster. Turnaround, a tough turnaround, and a friendly roll for Travell Bryson, who's starting to fill it up. He's got six points now. And he's going to build as the game goes, and, and rightfully so. Coming into this contest, shooting 49% from two, not only can he get you a bucket, he can do so efficiently. Aristode, pump fake on the three. Wilkins working for position in the post. Now backing in and blocked against the backboard by Gabe Grant. Gabe Grant using all six foot 10, big time frame, three star prospect, coming over and anticipating. He stapled that on the side of the backboard. Don't you want to see Gabe Grant get out and run in transition after what his coach told us, how he should be on the track team? Absolutely, like a gazelle, getting ahead, chin on rim. Got to reward the big fella if he's doing the dirty work. Brewster having trouble finding someone. Shot clock is down to two, so Crawford has to throw it up. Good box out inside and a quick outlet pass. Ahead of the pack is Shackleton, but he had to wait for the outlet. Can't finish. The follow is also no good, and it's corralled and saved by Aristode. Indrasadis in the front court. Final minute of the first half. No team is led by more than six. Here's Crawford working against King. B.J. Jackson wants a five-second call, doesn't get it. Here's Aristote, steps back into a three-pointer, no good. Another strong rebound inside by Christian. Shot clock is off. And the Lions are going to hold for one, trailing by three at the end of the first half. Brewster can benefit from multiple ball reversals. One shot, pull-up opportunities will always be there. you got to get this defense to move, and you do so by moving the rock around the court. Let's see where they go on this possession. And that's going to be a travel against Destin Christian before putting the ball on the floor. So 4.2 seconds to go and a chance for Brewster to get off a good shot. A bit overly anxious right there. And when you see you have driving lanes, you can get ahead of yourself. Drag that non-pivot foot. Kylan King showing some pressure in the backcourt. They go to Aristode, who kicks it out. Fowler, three-pointer. Count it at the buzzer to double the halftime lead. And Brewster is up by six. Combo forward coming in very well. Did a really good job of being able to create a little bit of space right there. He's coming off of a really big game against South Shore. Had 18 in the last one out for Brewster. Taking a look at that last second three-point field goal by Preston Fowler. Doing what he does. An excellent perimeter shooter. 28-22. Brewster with a six-point lead. What would you think overall the first half? Feverish pace. Looking at... The rebounding total, that was one thing I know Legacy wanted to come out and really be aware of. Down right now, minus six in the glass game. They got to do a better job of hitting bodies and closing out Brewster to one-shot opportunities. But overall, really competitive contest. There's your halftime score. Brewster 28, Legacy 22. Game one of day one, halftime. And we'll be back with the second half. The Bob McKillop Invitational from Hofstra University.
Second half coming up from Hofstra. Brewster leading Legacy 28 to 22. Today's first half stats are brought to you by Army National Guard. Tight game so far. Austin, you see the shooting percentage and the three point percentage. Brewster a little more damage from downtown and an advantage on the boards as well. Yeah, that's why points in the bane have been at such a high uh, clip because they've been struggling to shoot from beyond the arc. Nice balance. Uh, Brewster plus four on the overall rebounding category. And I can imagine that top of emphasis in both individual locker rooms are minimizing turnovers in the second half. One double digit score in the game so far, leading everyone, Dwayne Aristode, and doing it in a variety of ways. Yeah, and such a versatile player to have at your disposal and a member of the Netherlands 2022 FIBA under 16 team. He's bringing that experience here to this level, a three level scorer and he's getting up a lot of attempts. And with some of the other players on Brewster not stroking it up to their ability, it's nice to have that go-to guy in these instances. Travell Bryson and TJ Copeland, each leading the way for Legacy with six points in that first half. There's Aristode, he has 11. Good stat line so far. As we get set for the third quarter, it'll be Brewster ball first. Brewster 21 and six overall, a four and four record in EYBL Scholastic. Their Division I backcourt standing right in front of us, in fact. Elijah Crawford heading to Stanford. Noya Sindrasaitis signed his letter of intent with Iowa State. And here we go, third quarter. Brewster, a six-point lead. Scoreless first half for Andrew Sadis. I can imagine he's going to try to write that here. Right off the bat, Crawford hits the pull-up jumper. And Brewster has its largest lead of the afternoon. Nice set, two-man game, getting to his spot right at the elbow and settling again, not over-penetrating. Nice mid-range jump shot opportunity. Hansen whips it back on the left side for Copeland, muscling his way inside. Jacobson's height perhaps bothering the shot attempt. Here comes Crawford after hitting that jumper a moment ago. Dribbles away from the Jacobson screen. Wilkins will recenter. Look out for Aristode in space. Jacobson a couple dribbles. Now Wilkins trying to burrow his way to the basket off the side of the backboard and corralled by Christian. And nice defense by Christian. Wilkins driving it right to his chest, straight up and down. Superman as they call it, not foul. Good answer, TJ Copeland on the other end with his first three pointer of the afternoon. He's got a team high nine. And every time Brewster appears like it might be pulling away, Legacy hits a big shot. 19 of 30, or 43% on the year from beyond the arc at his size and six foot six. Nice to have that well-balanced approach. And how about that take right there by Andrew Sidis? The take and the finish inside, his first bucket of the game. And you see right here, spacing out by TJ Copeland. Daniel Jacobson's not going to get out on you, and you got to make him pay, and that's how you become almost indefensible when he starts to play that three-point opportunity and make you a driver. Then you got to put it on the floor and mix it up. Indrositis finishes the three-point play. It doesn't take much to get him going. He sees that basketball go through the rim, and again, he starts to build. His game is built for the distance. Little pick and roll, backdoor feed, and it's knocked out of the hands of Copeland. It'll stay with Legacy. Nice reaction speed by Elijah Crawford on that back line, coming over in perfect help position. They're going to love that at Stanford. Shackleton over Jacobson, not really. Jacobson altered that one for sure. Good hustle by Copeland going to the floor. And we have a timeout called by the legacy bench to save the possession for the Lions. Not before TJ Copeland knocks out five or six push-ups. <laughs> He's already yoked up enough, almost ripping through the jersey, but he, he wants more. And nice play right there, Daniel Jacobson, rim protecting. Don't always have to create contact with the basketball and block the shot. If you're big and you're tall and you're standing in front of the defender, you've done your job. It's funny, when we spoke with B.J. Jackson, Copeland's head coach, he told us about his physicality and how he's a physical specimen. First time I've seen him in person today <laughs> and checking the players as they come out for warm-ups and immediately 
the eye just gravitates towards T.J. Copeland. Yeah, he's built like a, a football player. He could play probably a multi multitude of different positions if he was on the gridiron. Reminds me of no Chad or Mir from Maryland, an undersized big that can really hit you on the boards and finish in the paint. He tosses Jacobson aside that time, but in doing so is called for a foul. And he had two hands around the waist right there. And him and Jacobson are sharing a laugh. They've been chatting it up all game. Such an interesting matchup and a <laughs> contrast of styles between Daniel Jacobson and T.J. Copeland. Indrasadis pops out. Mismatch inside. Now they throw the double at Jacobson, and he still finishes. And how about that? He sets the down screen and goes immediately into the post up, and despite the double coming over, has the touch to be able to finish over the top. He was hell-bent on taking advantage of that mismatch. A 10-point lead, first double-digit lead of the game. Good defense here, and a turnover as Bryson threw it away looking for Shackleton. Great defense right there, defending what his chest was, Sebastian Wilkins, and Bryson had nowhere to go, and then that's the opportunity for you to take up passing lanes, had to throw it out of bounds. Elijah Crawford from Augusta, Georgia. Nearly a 50-40-90 guy. It's a 50-40-80 guy as his pass is deflected out of bounds. Destin Christian trying to get to that basketball. This is where the game gets tight and becomes even more important for you to come back to passes to secure opportunities for your teammates. Backdoor cut. Crawford behind the back. Dangerous pass is poked away and stolen. Out in front, Shackleton to the basket. Nice finish with the left. Nice hostage step and dribble right there by Shackleton. He stepped in front of the defender and then away, taking away his jump in a shot blocking attempt. Indrasadis pops out. They work through Jacobson at the high post when he's out there. Hands it to Crawford for three. Settled behind that screen, and what a big one it is from Daniel Jacobson. Cleared enough space, and all he needs is a glimpse of daylight. Crawford 46% from downtown. Three and a half minutes gone by here in the third quarter. Brewster's extended to an 11 point lead. Copeland working hard inside, and there's a foul on the floor against Jacobson. It's getting very physical between the two big men. And that's just not good enough defensively on a player of the caliber of Elijah Crawford. You gotta chase him and, and try to lock and trail to make him curl in that situation and make him a driver. Nice cut inside as Copeland beat Jacobson to the basket. I like that. He stopped right at the CAA sign. He didn't come to the basketball when you establish good real estate in the paint. No need to take a further step. Catch the ball, turn, and score. TJ Copeland with 11 points. Indrasadis looking for it back from Wilkins. Now here's Crawford on the curl. Pass deflected. Taken away by Christian and a quick outlet. Shackleton to the basket, blocked inside, but a follow is good. Destin Christian running the floor. That's why you run the floor right there, kids. You gotta continue to play through the whistle and follow up your teammates' efforts. Four straight points for Legacy. Indrasadis comes up short, another chance for him. Comes up short again. And it just hasn't been his day offensively, too. Very easy looks, and I can imagine if you lock him in a gym, he can make that probably nine out of 10 times. Jacobson with the block from behind as Christian took it to the basket, and then Christian was out of bounds. That pace is picking up again, but really important that both teams take advantage of the shots that they are getting close to the rim. We talked about how three-pointers have been at a premium throughout the game, so it's gonna come down to paint, points in the paint. Crawford switching directions, turns on the Jets, off the glass. That is a tough shot. That's beautiful body control right there. Nobody steps up defensively, so he's making a bet. And look who beats everyone down court. It's TJ Copeland, slams home now 13 points, and it's back to a seven-point Brewster lead. As a big fella, you got to make the game easy and make sure that you're reserving at least four to six points off of pure effort, beating your opposing player up the court. Nice job right there by Cope. No problem there today. He's been effort all afternoon. Indrasadis can't connect with Jacobson on the pick and roll and another turnover by Brewster. And we asked uh, Coach earlier this week when talking about legacies, what coerced T.J. Copeland to 
makes the jump from Jersey down to Legacy, and he said the academic piece was very crucial for him and his family. He's thinking not only about his game athletically, but you know what he wants to do in life outside of the basketball court. Legacy has five players on the roster already taking college level courses as Cole Hansen hits the jumper and Jason Smith calls timeout from the Brewster bench as their lead once 11 has been trimmed to five. That's a high level, high difficult shot right there. And speaking of academics, Cole Hansen is the academic guy on this team. He gets really good grades and that's a big time, big time take by Elijah Crawford. Defense doesn't step up and he makes them pay. How about that? Now you see me, now you don't. Crawford's been good. Aristode's been quiet here in the third quarter. I'm impressed by the resilience of this legacy team. I mentioned earlier, it has seemed a couple of times that Brewster was on the verge of pulling away, and legacy has not allowed that to happen. You gotta have that next play mentality, and this is a heavyweight fight. You're gonna take hips, hits, you're gonna take your lumps, bumps, and bruises. It's about how you respond, and so far, their big heavyweight response has come from T.J. Copeland. Legacy up here from Greenville, South Carolina. Up here being Hempstead, New York, the campus of Hofstra University. They're calling this, Austin, the biggest event in the history of Long Island basketball. It is. The main event tonight, the entire Bob McKillop Invitational. <laughs> headline tonight, of course, Montverde against Long Island Lutheran, number one against number two in the entire country. That's the biggest game in town in the, the entire New York City area when you consider all the talent that will be concentrated in this building over the next 48 hours. Of course, Cooper Flagg, the top ranked player in the country, VJ Edgecombe of Lehigh, ranked fifth in the country, and a lot of other talent surrounding those two stars. So Jason Smith trying to calm things down in that timeout a moment ago. Crawford kicks it up to Preston Fowler. Aristo trying to get on track here in the second half and does with that jumper. Even if you have a hand in his face, that might not be enough. You gotta get all the way in his kitchen and make him take that shot opportunity out of his mindset. Make him a driver. Copeland has been the go-to guy in the second half. Wants to repost against Jacobson. Cross-court pass, Hansen, one dribble into a three, and rebounded by Fowler. Aristode leaves it back for Crawford. Fowler has good range. Crawford checking with head coach Jason Smith on the Brewster bench. Working on Hansen, shot clock under 10. Aristode from the baseline, turns and fires. So skilled, had his eyes on the shot clock before he caught that basketball, understood where the defender was and rose up for the mid-range. Such a lost start, especially in high school basketball. King inside feed for Christian, who finishes plus the foul. Big time response. Destin Christian, all six foot six, 220. He's another one of these strongly built tweeners that can mix it up in his game. And you see him right there on the back line operating amongst the trees, and he can finish. Top 25 in scoring on his lonesome, number 17 in the EYBL. Top 25 in rebounding as well. That's what you like, versatility. Can't finish the three-point play here. So the lead for Brewster remains eight, final middle of the third quarter. Jeremiah Jenkins, the backup point guard, has just checked back in. So is Cole Kirouac, the backup center. Indrasaita stops at the foul line. Jenkins drives against Hansing. Nice touch pass to Indrasaita. Off the dribble from the baseline in rhythm. That's routine right there by Indrasaita. Used the shot fake to get the defender up off of him. Went through his progressions at his own pace and drilled it. And a really nice touch pass by Aristote to set it up. 20 seconds to go. A deep three off the mark by Travell Bryson, shot clock is off. Brewster with a chance to increase its 10 point lead heading into the fourth. Indrasaitis gives it right back to Jenkins. Tries to turn the corner behind the back, into the corner, Aristotle had to get it off, in and out, 
And the third quarter ends with Brewster up 10. Brewster is sharing the game and getting it into all their playmakers' hands. Andrew Sidas with the shot fake, creating space and opportunity. He wasn't trying to go over in the second half, and he's responded accordingly. So three quarters in the books here at Hofstra. Brewster leading legacy 47 to 37. Nike EYBL Scholastic from the Bob McKillick Invitational is brought to you by Nike. Only basketball. Chipotle, real ingredients, real flavors. Chipotle for real. The Army National Guard, the next greatest generation is now. And Gold SN, maximize your potential. Little t-shirt toss here. Inside the Mac. Can never go wrong with a little t-shirt time. Get the fans up and into it. Great atmosphere that we got here in Long Island and what's not to like? Full slate of big time, high competitive basketball on top of everybody's mind. The event in honor of Bob McKillop, kind of basketball royalty here on Long Island, was a Queens native and Queens for those geographically inclined is part of Long Island. Yes. Played for Chaminade and for Hofstra, was the team MVP here in 1972. He also coached at Holy Trinity, and that'll be the next game of this triple header. Chaminade, the team he played for, against Holy Trinity, the team he coached. Really cool stuff, and that's how you know you've been impactful in your basketball journey. There's a million different ways to give back, but if you respect the game and you approach it, your name will ring bells for eternity. He also coached Long Island Lutheran, led them to five state championships, then went on to a long and successful career at Davidson, winning 634 games. And while there, he coached a guy who was a decent shooter by the name of Stephen Curry. I think I've heard of him maybe once or twice. I think he's still hanging around. Yeah, somewhere. All-Star weekend for the NBA in Indianapolis, right out of the mid-quarter break to the basket no good and inside that's going to be a foul against Gabe Grant no excuse me it's going the other way against Brewster and Cole Kerouac so Grant drawing the foul so we'll see Gabe Grant the 6'10 senior from Baltimore left-handed stroke at the line for the first time and BJ Jackson really likes Gabe Grant and you heard about the insight that he received on him from his Brewster days he's a type of guy that mentally just has to make the decision to turn it on he has all the physical tools and the skill set to really be great Kylan King chased down that offensive rebound off the missed attempt and it leads to a three-point attempt that's no good by Shackleton Brewster by 10, just underway, fourth quarter. Good strong defense here by Kylan King against Jeremiah Jenkins. Jenkins gets it back. Little pitch and catch with Fowler. Aristode against Bryson. Circling, steps back, and that is a tough mid-range jumper. It's really good move and a barrage of dribbles. To probably do without one or two of those dribble moves and be a little, little bit more efficient, but who's complaining when you're knocking down a mid-range that consistent? Dwayne Aristode with 18 points now. He and Kirouac battling for that rebound. It's saved by Kirouac. Brewster out rebounding legacy 27 to 19. That is coming out and locking into the scout and being very disciplined in your box outs. They go seven foot and then 6'10 on the depth chart at center. Jenkins comes up short, outlet pass. Christian, dangerous cross court pass to a cutting Grant and he couldn't handle it. And Cole Kerouac a little bit shaken up after that play under the basket. Looking for a substitute, mm, I hope he's okay. Look at this move. Just survey and survey and use an all six foot seven to rise up over Travell Bryson, who's given up about three inches right there. It's a difficult matchup for a lot of different players. And that's what Dwayne Aristotle presents. Highly touted 
four-star player. He's going to be able to choose just about anywhere he wants to go when it's all said and done. Cole Kirouac hustled back to break up that play as Fowler misses the three. And we're going the other way. That is against Aristo and a push off on the rebound. And Kerouac limped off the floor and back to the trainer's table behind the Brewster bench. After the Aristo foul, Copeland back in. He's got 13 points to lead the Lions. Hands it back to Hansen. Drives on Jenkins. Step back, gets the roll. Nice move with a high degree of di difficulty. Body control, bodies leaning left, but you still have to have that center of gravity to be able to deliver that shot from the shooting pocket. Senior from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Back to a 10 point, now 12 again as Fowler finds Jenkins cutting back door. Big time. And for young defenders that are up in help position, anytime. We have a technical foul called after that play against Jeremiah Jenkins. So it's Jenkins' second personal. It's the third against Brewster. Hanson will shoot two. Wow, well, as I was uh, ready to commend, Jenkins on the, the back door and the cutting compounds it with a technical foul. And we're getting an explanation from the referees as to what exactly happened. Looked like it was taunting after the finish inside by Jenkins. So free throws complete. Now it's 51-41. Back to a 10-point game. See if Legacy has another run in it, if they could take advantage. Hansen kicks out from the double team. Three-pointer rattles home for Copeland, who's been terrific today. Yeah, he's been shooting it very, very well. Second three of the afternoon. Saw what he can do inside, but don't give him a glimpse of daylight from beyond the arc. He can make you pay. The New Jersey native who has taken an official visit to Seton Hall and an answer there from Noyes Indrasatis from downtown. Born here in the U.S., but you know he has those Lithuanian roots, Lithuanian basketball player synonymous with toughness and a high degree of skill. Powering inside, and Jacobson with the block and a little something extra. Too much extra, in fact, because Daniel Jacobson is called for the technical foul. Uh, I don't love it. I don't love that type of call because these two have been going at it all afternoon, chirping at one another. Sometimes you do have to regulate to make sure it doesn't get out of hand, but sometimes, you know, you throw a rock and you try to hold your hand and you get caught right in front of the referee, and that's what happened right there by Daniel Jacobson. Well, it'll send a terrific free throw shooter, Cole Hansen, back to the line. One more. That'll be important at the next level once he gets to West Lafayette to be able to control your emotions and not get wrapped up in that game within the game. As you can see, he did a really good job post-defensively against T.J. Copeland, took up his airspace and swatted it, but... Maybe you reserve the banter for after the game. <laughs> On his way to the Big Ten to play for Purdue. And it's just ridiculous that Matt Painter keeps rolling <laughs> in these seven foot plus. You see what Zach Eady's doing this year and over the last two seasons, probably going to go back to back as the national player of the year. Matt Painter has a type, doesn't he? He sure does but I don't know if he's had one as skilled as Daniel Jacobson at this young age. Good position inside, but Copeland comes up short. Follow, no good, and it's grabbed by Sebastian Wilkins. Less than four minutes to play. Brewster has led since about the midway point through the first quarter. Looking to run a little clock here. Jenkins using the screen, finds Wilkins on the baseline. And good body control for the finish. 
tough move right there by Wilkins. Fifth in field goal percentage in the EYBL. And you can see the determination, the low rip, and the absorption of contact able to finish over the defender. Christian, spin move inside, blocked, but also fouled. Sebastian Wilkins called for the foul. Look at this move. He would not be deterred right there, and the closeout has to be better. T.J. Copeland with Matador defense, and the help has to be established outside the paint. Maybe a charge taken opportunity. And aided by the two technical fouls this quarter, Legacy is in the bonus. Have to take advantage of it at the line. One more for Christian, a senior from Atlanta. Misses them both. Good box out and rebound by Fowler. Some pressure being shown by Legacy. King is back on the floor. Kylan King matched up right now with Jeremiah Jenkins. We'll be back here tomorrow, and so will these two teams. Tomorrow night, Brewster Academy plays Long Island Lutheran as Indrasadis comes up short again. Rebound is batted around and saved by Indrasadis. Great hustle there and a new shot clock. And that's the toughness and the commitment to winning basketball by Indrasadis. Giving up his body to get his team an extra possession. Legacy tomorrow evening will play Montverde. Wilkins. Not sure what the plan of action was there, but he draws a foul. Looked like he had intent on <laughs> trying to get close to the rim and sky for a dunk, but a nice classic hard foul. Took that away before he could even get off the ground. Ran into TJ Copeland. Copeland's second foul. Wilkins misfires on the first free throw. 2.22 to go. Travell Bryson back in for Kylan King. Bryson has six points, all of those coming in the first half. And Sebastian Wilkins now has six. Little hop in the step of Adrian Shackleton. Loses the handle, good hustle by Fowler, but he was on the sideline. So it'll stay with Legacy. Eight turnovers respectively for each program. Try to stay at or below that 10 turnover mark. Maximize the amount of possessions that you have, 46 to 47 in regards to possession matchup. It's been pretty even. Nice move along the baseline by Destin Christian. Big time move with the quick spin for his ninth point of the afternoon using that big frame to create space. Now a turnover off the press. Christian down the lane to the basket, lays it in. Timeout legacy, minute 47 to go. We're not done yet. It's an eight point game. And Destin Christian has been a stat stuffer for legacy all season. We talked about him being top 25 in scoring and top 12 in rebounding, but also shooting at a very high percentage as well for this team. You like that matchup and what He's able to bring in regards to playing off of T.J. Copeland. Very similar in size and stature, but different games. It's certainly a sturdy front line for Legacy. Yeah, not the tallest. But not the tallest. What, what they lack in height, they make up for in physicality and heart and nature. You can see there's been no back down. Some of the drawing between Daniel Jacobson and this front line for Legacy. One of the things P.J. Jackson spoke to us about that he would like to see improvement from his team is that in the losses this year, they're 12 and 6 overall, he needs his team to play the full 32 minutes. Yep. I think for the most part, they've they've done that today. There haven't been any serious lapses by Legacy. And that's a skill. Honestly, I remember the jump between my high school days competing at Blair Academy as a prep school and going up to playing in Division One, exerting yourself each and every possession. You have to learn the limits of your body. And you're taught that through film and through practicing at the very highest level, night in and night out. 
Pat O'Keefe and the former Rutgers Scarlet Knight, Austin Johnson. Start of a great day of basketball here at Hofstra University. Foul is called against Adrian Shackleton. It's the second against Legacy. Keeping up the pressure. Down by eight. Elijah Crawford back in the game. Bobcats running some clock here. Aristode lobs it inside. Wilkins spins towards the basket, can't finish. Rebound is grabbed by Copeland. Outlet pass, Bryson. Can't finish, he's blocked from behind by a hustling Elijah Crawford. That is ridiculous. Winning basketball mentality, Elijah Crawford. Never gave up on the play. One of the shortest guys on the court gets the rejection. With the chase down block, final minute of the fourth quarter. And Brewster, thanks to Crawford's defensive play, still leading by eight. Crawford guarded tightly by Hansen. Shot clock is at two. Crawford knocked away from behind, out of bounds. One second to shoot, it'll stay. As we take another look at that block from behind, Crawford sizing that up perfectly. And that's the choice of how he opted to foot himself, Bryson that is. Maybe best to catch that and go up off of one, gather himself with the hop step, allow the defender to get back into the play. Lob pass to Aristode, and the shot clock reset incorrectly. It's a shot clock violation. So a good defensive stand there for Legacy, forcing the turnover. 41 seconds to go. They're down by eight. They've got to score in a hurry. Shackleton drives on Crawford. His pass is picked off by Crawford. Two great defensive plays here in the final minute and a half for Elijah Crawford. Has to get it across the midcourt line, which they do. And Aristode is fouled by Shackleton with 21.8 on the clock. Nice job breaking the press by moving the basketball and looking for ways to advance. Unselfish passing drives Defense is crazy because they cannot get close to the basketball. Indrasadis is fouled by He's Copeland. One more foul to give for Legacy. Kylan King replaces Adrian Shackleton. Indrasadis looking and has to call a timeout to avoid a five second violation. Well. Coach Smith has to like the effort that he's seen from the Bobcats thus far this game. He talked about wanting to get off to a better start and not having to overexert themselves by pulling back in games where they could easily take the lead. And there's only been one league for Legacy, and that was early on in this game when they led 14-13. And ever since then, it's been all Brewster. Jason Smith, his 24th season as the head coach at Brewster Academy. 635 wins and an 813 winning percentage. Last year, the Bobcats won at least 30 games for the 12th time, and this program has averaged 30 wins a year over the last 13 seasons. Talk about replicating success. That all starts with the program being the sum and the parts of that program being the individual pieces that he has to get the most out of year in and year out. And a lot of notable basketball alumni that have gone on to professional careers in the NBA, Donovan Mitchell, Cleveland Cavaliers, Will Barton from the Denver Nuggets. The list goes on and on. Sustained success here for Coach Smith. 20 alumni have played in the NBA. 12 alumni have been drafted since 2010. An immediate foul off the inbound. This one's going to be against Hansen and will send Preston Fowler to the line. And I spoke with Coach Smith about one of the coolest things. I didn't even go to Brewster, but I had a couple of teammates and friends that played there. And everybody talks about the Brewster alumni game and how all the guys that played at Brewster Academy at one point or another love to come back and compete against one another build the camaraderie, see people they haven't seen in many years. And it's going away in recent history with COVID being a, a reason as to why, but that's something he's looking to bring back soon. 
Yeah, you can imagine the amount of high-end talent in that gym for an alumni game. Best ticket around. Except for this one here today. That's right. It'll be sold out for the nightcap tonight between Lujai and Montford, the top two teams in the country. Wild three-point attempt <laughs> is good by Shackleton. And a timeout is called with 7.5 seconds to go. That's the third one-legged three-point shot attempt we've seen here in this game. That means a lot of these players have been locked in on Luka Doncic. <laughs> and before that, Dirk Nowitzki. Brewster shooting the three ball very well today. Seven for 18 from downtown. Also a good percentage for Legacy. They're five out of 13. Yeah, getting contributions from Preston Fowler, who knocked down two triples, along with Dwayne Aristotle, who has two by himself. And you see the one-legged three right here by Shackleton. What it is, it just kids don't want to convert regularly with a normal three. You got to spruce it up a little bit. Lift up a knee. Regular's boring. That's right. We've got 7.5 seconds to go. B.J. Jackson's team is in the penalty. And they are down to one timeout. Should Brewster get in trouble, they still have three timeouts at their disposal. We'll be back, you and I, Austin, for the main event. Tonight at 8 o'clock, Montverde against Long Island Lutheran. You can catch that broadcast right here. If you're not lucky enough to be in the gym this evening, a quick foul given by Hansen against Elijah Crawford. Nearly a full second went off the clock. And if there's one guy that you don't want to see go to the free throw line, it's Crawford shooting it at an 80% clip in EYBL play this year. True to form, he knocks down the first. Thank you for legacy number three, Adrian Shackleton. Adrian Shackleton checks back in. He just hit that one-legged three-pointer a second ago. Crawford calmly hits them both. The lead is nine. Shackleton pushing it up court. Copeland, one last attempt from downtown. That's good. It'll count. And the final score, Brewster, 61, and Legacy, 55. Hard-fought battle between two respected programs goes the distance. And how about Aristo going, coming out hot, 8 of 13 from 2, 2 of 5 from 3 to go along with 5 rebounds and 2 assists. True stat stuff. The leading scorer in the game with 18 points, TJ Copeland with that last three pointer, leading the way in this one for Legacy. That actually gave Copeland 20 for the game, so he ends up as the high man today. Aristote was impressive though with the mid range with the three point jumper. And how about Copeland as well in the losing effort with those 20 points? and five rebounds, also a couple of block shots, and having to go up against a seven-footer in Daniel Jacobson, really giving up in size three to four inches. Copeland was really good in this game. Yeah, you can see what all the hype was about, and he definitely lives up to the hype of being a physical specimen. There's no back down. He has a dog mentality, and he had the numbers in this game to back it up, despite not coming out with the victory. Legacy falls to 12 and seven. With the loss, Brewster is now 22 and six as they look to rack up another 30 win season. Again, the final score from Hofstra, Brewster, 61 to 55 over Legacy. We are just getting started though at the Bob McKillop Invitational. We'll step aside for now. We will be back with the third game of the triple header between the top two teams in the country, number one Montverde, and number two, Long Island Lutheran. So please make sure you join us for that. For Austin Johnson and our entire crew, I'm Pat O'Keefe. We'll see you right back here at 8 o'clock.